Hello and welcome to my channel, I'm Fornax and today we're diving into the latest blog post for Guild Wars 2. I'm going to read it to you, I'm going to talk about it and do some wild speculation as ever. Make yourself comfortable and let's dive into it. So the blog was posted on the 25th of July, title is After the Dragon Cycle. Hey, Indigo here. I am a narrative lead on Guild Wars 2 Secrets of the Obscure, one member of a team of passionate developers. Before Secrets of the Obscure drops in a few weeks, I'd love to talk you through some of the questions we've tackled as we started carving out a new path for Tyria. Disclaimer, we're going to stay pretty high level here, but be mindful of some minor teasers ahead and major spoilers for previous expansions. After we wrapped on Guild Wars 2 Ender Dragons and our team's 10 years saga of the Dragon Cycle came to an end, we found ourselves in a critical point in the story of Guild Wars 2. There were quite a few directions that we were really interested in pursuing, got tons of stories and interior left to tell, from mysteries we've hinted at in years past to completely novel ideas. After all, the world is only just finding its footing following the end of the Dragon Cycle, a global affliction that promised certain destruction until Suan's death in End of Dragons. We have a lot to say, so where to start? We've only explored a small portion of Tyria to date, and even then, a great deal of the world we do know has vastly changed over the events of the last 11 real world years. We want to dig into that with more focus, self-contained stories, and we hope to bring each of these into the limelight as we see Tyria react and unravel to a future without chaos, well, without dragon-centric chaos. But before we slow things down and explore modern Tyria, we opted for something a little more mysterious to mark the beginning of a new arc. We had a handful of front runners, but a franchise long mystery quickly became our lead focus, the Wizard's Tower. I love that we're going to be getting focused stories. I want a Tengu dedicated expansion where we explore the Dominion of Dwinds, where we understand the histories, the long histories and the difficult histories of the Tengu. And I want to uncover as much of the map as possible. I want to dive into the history and struggles of the dwarves, both the Deldemore and the Stone Summit, who we know after Icebrood Saga are still out there. The devs are not wrong. There are numerous narrative threads to pull on. And I love personally that they've gone for the Wizard's Tower. It's been there. It's a mystery box. They can fill it with whatever they want, which gives them a huge amount of scope and scale to just have fun with the lore to expand the universe as we go forward. So let's read on and see if they reveal anything new about the Wizard's Tower. The Wizard's Tower and its creator are some of Tyria's best kept secrets. Dating back to the original Guild Wars 2, it's taken up a residence on the Tyrian horizon since the beginning. All Tyrians knew that it was supposedly owned by a wizard named Isgaran, although he's never been physically seen and that a few individuals have tried to breach its walls. I'm looking at you, Galrath. That's a reference to Guild Wars 1 and the only quest linked to the Wizard's Tower in any of the original games. Okay, carrying on. During the Guild Wars 2 era, it's rested above the hamlet of Garenhof until we put it out of the sky in the June 27th update. Aside from a couple of teasers over the years, we've shielded the truth about Isgaran and his mysterious tower until now. Yeah, that's very true. There is tiny bits of lore. If you check out my video here, you can find out a bit of the lore. I also missed out something. So there's people who've tried to get into the tower, uh, NPC residents. They find themselves pretty much turned into elementals, which explains the elementals in Garenhof. I don't think that is Garen or Garen or will be Garen. If you watch the video, you'll understand what I'm talking about is a bad person. I think that there is a protection spell and I think they've just come a cropper with it. I mean, he might be a terrible person. We're going to find out soon, hopefully, but I digress. Forgive me if you can hear my chair clicking. Let's carry on. So the Wizard's Tower provided the perfect canvas to tell a very different story. One that spans thousands of years, focusing on Isgaran, the Wizard's Tower and the Astral Ward allowed us to dive into some of the deepest crevasses of our lore. We're talking ancient beings, whispers of long ago wars and buried secrets. 
will be fighting an entirely new enemy faction, only subtly teased in content in the past. So, okay, this is amazing. I love ancient lore and whispers of a threat in the darkness. And if you've watched any of my videos, you'll know that I'm fascinated by the exodus of humanity from its home world to Tyria. I want to know what drove them there. And I'm thinking perhaps that the new enemy faction we will be facing in the Secrets of the Obscure Soto will be those big bads. So anyway, back to the blog. It's a story that lit a flame under the development team too. Over the years, almost every team wanted to utilize the tower from raids and fractals to story, but no single idea landed where we wanted to take it, giving the wizard's tower an entire expansion felt like the best way to honor what is now a multi-game mystery. I love the fact that they're focusing on one small thing. This could be nothing, but they have built an entire expansion around the idea of this mystery box. Now, I would love to get my, my grubby mitts on the lore bible for Guild Wars 2. There will be many tomes of a multiverse of ideas around this. Everything themed around this extraordinary, mysterious building that is apparently linking us to the rest of the cosmos. And this holds true to their ethos, their new ethos of having a very focused expansion. We're all about the Wizard's Tower and the characters who inhabit it and what I think it is, which is the vanguard. It's the keepers at the gate, keeping the baddies out of Tyria so that we can have a peaceful existence. Well, apart from, you know, the dragons, but yeah, I digress. So let's go back to the blog. With the dragon story bookmarked at Aureen's temporary departure, which will be probably important at some point, the team is eager to let off some steam and work on something a little wild. Ooh -hoo -hoo. So the Wizard's Tower is just as exciting to us as it has been for the community to speculate about all these years. When we managed to wiggle it into just about every pitch we had for the fourth expansion, yeah, we knew we had our topic. I have often speculated that it would become of raid wing with Isgaran and armies of elementals and you have to battle through them and then get the head of the wizard. But it's like a little bit bloodthirsty on my part. Okay, I'm glad it's an expansion. Let's move on. Back to the blog post. So the commander's journey. Honestly, stick around because this is a big departure narratively for us and I think it's super important. So given that Guild Wars 2 Secrets of the Obscure is going to be something of a fresh start for us as a narrative, I worked with Matthew Medina, the expansion's narrative design lead, to send the commander on a journey absent of their usual comrades. Yes, everybody else is staying at home, it's just us and a returning hero character. We thought that this would make the story as exciting and bewildering to the commander as a character as it would be for the player. And now we're getting into spoiler adjacent stuff. So at the top of the story, a mission goes awry and we're pulled into unexplored territory, both physically and intellectually. We're getting sucked into the multiverse. Fantastic. By isolating the commander from their support group and thus their typical problem-solving catalyst, which I will not miss, we'll be able to completely immerse the player character in this darker, more mystical facet of Tyria as the Astral Ward battle against the threat of the Cryptus. So I think the community in general and many content creators have pointed to the deus ex machina of timey to solve all our problem for us as we command a smash. I hope they allow our character to expand intellectually as well as uh, demonstrating our physical and magical prowess. More than that, the world state of Tyria is at such a critical turning point with the threat of the Elder Dragons calmed and our prismatic utility knife Aureen taking a good old nap somewhere secluded, all our friends are busy with their own lives now. And some of them are playing crucial roles in rebuilding the world. Cass and Jury, recently engaged, have established positions in the Crichton political system. Cretia and Ritlock are facing the Kano election, and heck, they've got a lot to cope with following the Ice Brood saga. Timey is a borrowed in June's lab, solving every crisis she possibly can with our Canthan inventors. Gorik and Rama have the agency, and Ram is probably thriving in some much-needed therapy. 
all these characters have served as guiding lights to the commander and they have shaped our journey. We are excited to give you glimpses into their post-dragon lives when we dive into those local stories about Tyria's revival. But before that, it's time the commander took a journey on their own. There is one exception to this rule. I love being in worlds where it feels like a living, breathing place. And I'm happy that I was completely wrong. So I surmised that Gorik and Rama's agency, we would be a part of that. And that would be us going forward. But looking back now, it was very much a conversation exclusively between Gorik and Rama. And we were just there as part of their friend group. We will not be diving in, at least for the time being, into um, the uh, Sherlock-esque adventures of the commander. And uh, storm warning ahead. So Krisha and Ritlo are facing the Kano election. Oh, that could be a big problem for the other races of Tyria. Yes, the, the Char are a very different race to where we found them in Guild Wars. They are very different to how we found them at the beginning of the game. However, their, their culture is heavily based on conflict and imperialism. And depending on who gets that job, we could see an expansion where the Char declare war on the other races. They finally complete their push to remove humanity from their homelands. Watch this space. That could be incredibly important going forward. Okay, back to the blog post. So Zoja is a character who has been mysteriously AWOL since the events of Guild Wars 2 Heart of Thorns, where she endured some pretty awful injuries after being trapped inside that blighting pod. Whilst I don't want to spoil her journey, I can say it was an emotional one. We have years of lost ground to cover, and our favourite Golemancer has been doing some serious soul-searching. Like the commander will have in Secrets of the Obscure, Zoja needs a journey of her own. I am incredibly happy for the return of Zoja. I didn't much appreciate her character. I thought she was very angry and brittle in her grief um, when we encounter her in the personal story. If you play through as an Asura the personal story, she is much more affable because you are basically her apprentice. I'm happy to see the evolution of this character. I'm happy that she's returned. I'm sad that we didn't get any of her in any of the other expansions. She certainly deserved to be in them. And I'm overjoyed that Felicia Day is coming back. And I think she will do this character justice with her performance. She always delivers. Okay, back to the blog post. I will keep the story under my hat for now. Getting to explore the depth of Zoja's self-discovery was a delight. In the middle of our fight against the Cryptus, we're going to have some incredibly tender and vulnerable moments with our Asuran ally. And I think that's something that the, the Asura lack. I mean, we've seen it in Timey, but the Asura can be a quite brittle, quite abrasive. They certainly were very much more predatory in the original games. And onto the Cryptus, who are our new, desperately in need of an orthodontist enemy. So, the Cryptus are one of the meteor enemies we fought to date, Badumtish, pun intended, finding a new enemy force that touched on past law but was also fresh and exciting to long-term players was a significant goal of ours and a very interesting challenge from a world-building perspective. I think it's testament to how popular, how much the demons of Bastion of the Penitent has captured the imagination of the community. You have to have in one hand the world that you want to build as a creator of these narrative experiences and you have to look to your community to the stories that they've embraced and i think this is perfect you know, marriage of the two creatures from the demon realm it's been a hot minute since we faced off against foes from across the mist with the exception of a few cryptos that have wiggled their way through Tyria's back door in the past, we haven't spent a lot of time with these guys before. Now, I feel like in that sentence, they're talking about creatures like Kanaxai, who I think is like an exploratory force, a, a vanguard, as it were, a scout, uh, coming to kind of test the waters of Tyria to see if it's a, a ripe hunting ground for yummy, fleshy things. Also, it's strange, with Kanaxai, I kind of get a vibe of the Lagos with him. 
He's from a specific house. Let me just Google that. Scythe of House Orcus. Okay, so if you haven't played, the new fractal is called Silent Surf, and we encounter Kanaxai and people that he has corrupted. And to me, in my head, this has such a Lagos vibe with the hunting aspect and the houses. I don't know whether the, the Lagos are actually secretly a, a race of demons who have taken up home in the oceans, who are Cryptus, but maybe a different faction of Cryptus, or maybe a different species of Cryptus. But I do like the fact that the demons are not a, a horde of monsters just rampaging their way across the multiverse. They seem to be organized, they have a culture, they have a history. I mean, it might be unspeakably terrible to outsiders, but it's, it's organized and thoughtful. And I'm looking forward to facing a big bad who is less of a, a storm on the horizon as we've had with some of the Elder Dragons. I think they tried to capture that kind of menace with Jormag, but I, I feel like they didn't lean into it enough. Because of this new focus, I'm very hopeful that the Cryptus will be allowed to grow into a menace that is worthy of being the main big bad of a franchise. Also, before I move on, we have seen Cryptus. I think that they are the creatures of the Bastion of the Penet. So it's not just Kanaxi, it's Deimos, it's whatever was guarding Sol D'Alessio. The Massat seem to be very aware of them, maybe even capturing them to study them it's it's a thought anyway sorry we, we are digressing again back to the blog post so uh they're fleshy they're horrifying and they're eager to take us out out to dinner would be good but i feel like they have more sinister intent than dinner and a show but they are not necessarily a world ending threat per se as menacing as they are we just got done with the elder dragons after all as you dive into Guild Wars 2 Secrets of the Obscure and fight back against the Cryptus, you'll unravel a much more personal rivalry between some of our key players, one that has lasted for over a millennium. Better yet, after completing the first leg of the story high above the clouds over Tyria, you're going to continue their journey in a much more curious environment. Okay, so I can't help but think that we will be taking the fight to the Cryptus. I think the first arc of Soto will be us dealing with the collapse of the of the vanguard of after Kraukatarik has, has decimated the mists, he's pierced the barrier, it's weakened the protections placed by, and this is my personal speculation, the human gods as they enter the world, they put a guard at the door. I think that that is the astral ward. And after Karakatoric and his rampage, the barrier has broken, and now we have an invasion of Cryptus. They've always been trying to get in, but now they have taken advantage of the weakening of their firmament. You see it when you're in uh, Gaiala Dells, you see it when you're in the Bastion of the Penitent, when you encounter Canaxi in the Fractal. You also see it when you go into the Fractal with the Dwarven Ruins and the Light of Deldramor. There's some places in Pateria have already been breached, and breached significant periods of time ago. However, now we are facing a full-on invasion. And I think that after we've pushed them back, after we've gained our footing, after we've put some barriers in place, maybe we're not able to, maybe we discover we can't unsmash the cup that Krakotoric destroyed, so we have to go to the realm of Cryptus and face down these different houses of demons. That's what I think is the curious environment. I mean, it could be an alternate reality, Tyria, where we see different versions of the story play out, different iterations of characters. We could be propelled into the past, into the future. We could be propelled. Maybe the place that the Cryptus are invading from is the original homeworld of humanity, and we get to really understand their history. But in conclusion, Tyria continued. Guild Wars 2, Secrets of the Obscure, will set the pace as Tyria looks to the future. There are whole facets of the world that we have yet to explore, much like the Wizard's Tower and the fractured archipelago that we will be ascending to in just a few weeks. Beyond that, Tyria has a lot of healing to do. 
The Silvari need to recover from the events of Heart of Thorns. The Char and Norn are on the mend following the Ice Brood saga. Cantha has been revealed to the world. He the Pact needs a new purpose. And we're about to meet the Astral Ward. Tyria is at a turning point. But before Tyria can truly heal, we're going to take on a cosmic journey. From one player who spent thousands of hours digging into Guild Wars and Guild Wars 2, to our community, we're excited to open a new door. I'll see you in game, Indigo. Thank you, Indigo. That was a beautiful article. I am incredibly excited about the cosmic aspect. I have always wondered, and I was never really satisfied with the answers about the cosmos that we got at the end of End of Dragons. It was interesting, but it didn't explain to me how she was spun into existence, how she was able to spin out of one element the other elements, how Tyria began, because she doesn't seem to have a creation story. I'm looking for a, a more Carl Sagan <laughs> explanation of the universe rather than the tale of a mother and her children, which was beautiful in and of itself, but I want to understand how the building blocks work, the cosmology of Tyria and the mists, and when we look up at the heavens in Tyria, are we looking at pinpricks of light in a veil of silk, or are we looking at other planets that share our realm, our planar realm, or are we literally seeing a multiverse of mist realms. I want to know, and the devs have said, that we're going to find out our broader place in the cosmos. So, finally, we might get an explanation for this. Inquiring minds would like to know. But, we have come to the end. Let me know what you think about my speculation. Let me know what you think about the blog post. Let me know your hopes for Tyria. Where you want the story to go. Are you hoping that we get a Char War expansion? Are you hoping that we get a Tengu um, centric expansion? Are you hoping that we we explore where the humans came from? Are you hoping that we get to explore the world of the Lagos, an entire Lagos expansion? Or do you agree with me and think that the Lagos could well be a faction of the Cryptus who have come into our world and decided to make it their home rather than conquer it? That would be interesting. That would be fascinating. I would love that. Let me know. Let me know what you think below. And whilst you're down there, if you are thinking of buying Secrets of the Obscure, there are links below, using any of which directly supports my channel, thanks to the generosity of ArenaNet and their partner program, of whom I am a proud affiliate. Using any of the links below to the free-to-play game or the Secrets of the Obscure or any of the other expansions directly supports my channel, but costs you not a penny more. And, of course, I have a Patreon if you'd like to join. My patrons keep the lights on here. They are a massive boon to my channel. I couldn't make the content without them. It's a lifeline, especially being a disabled content creator who I cannot guarantee to be able to work all the time. So yes, they're amazing. If you'd like to join them, links below. And you get to chat with me on a private Discord channel. I'm there all the time answering questions. That's a thing that is a thing. Okay, but sadly, we have come to the very end of the video. So. Until we meet again, until the next video, please stay safe, stay awesome, and thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye!